Thanks, you guys. You guys gave me a scare this morning. Wow. So, when I was almost home yesterday, after work, I realized, oh shoot, I forgot you guys in the truck. Oh no. Well, good thing it's safe, right? I'll get it in the morning. Yeah, you guys can sleep in the truck overnight. No big deal, right? So I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. So I get back to the truck this morning and I notice I have a new mud flap. I'm like, oh, that's nice. The other one was tearing along here, right? Well, that's nice of them to go ahead and do that for me. I appreciate that. I'm like, oh. They probably found my camera in there. Oh, they wouldn't have touched it. So I get into the truck, thinking to myself, geez, the one time I leave my like $500 camera in the truck is the day it goes into the shop, right? And I trust everybody here, but still, I don't like to leave valuables in the truck. So I get into the big semi truck here and I can't find you guys. And my heart was just sinking. I'm like, no way, there's no way. There's no way they would have taken my camera. They, they'd get caught way too easily, first of all. And secondly, no one in there would do that, right? So I'm just thinking to myself, well, what, what happened? For a half hour, I dug everything out of that truck looking for my camera, knowing that I left you in there. What happened? Maybe they took it out and left it in the shop office to keep it safe. Maybe they were just, you know, doing me a favor because, you know, you don't want to leave a $500 camera out in a truck, right? Maybe that's what happened. I dug everything out of there. And so I figured before I go to the shop and start uh, asking questions and throwing around possibilities and maybe it disappeared while it was in there. Before I do that, I better make sure, make double sure that you guys aren't hiding underneath something or like somewhere else, maybe in, maybe in my bag or something. So I dug everything out of my truck, my pickup truck, everything. I dug everything out of my lunch kit, all my bags that I usually carry you guys in. The last thing I had was my backpack. I dug everything out of there and I got all my tools in there. I got all, all kinds of stuff, different things for the camera and stuff. I was like, well, I know I didn't put it in here because I checked it last night because I was looking for you guys. I was worried about you. So I was looking for you. Like, it's not in here, but I better make double sure before I go to the shop and ask, right? You don't want to put things like that out there unnecessarily because I don't think that would ever happen here. But anyway, through the last pocket, I was onto the last pocket of my bag and I was just like getting, oh, taking a deep breath. Like, oh, I don't want to go and ask. I don't want to go and bring this up and ask them, hey, do you know who brought my truck into the shop yesterday? Uh, I have a $500 camera that's missing. I didn't want to go and do that. I like the guys there and that would be a terrible thing to have to ask. So I was getting to the bottom of the last pocket and I know I checked it yesterday already. I'm like, it's not in here, it's not in here. I take everything out and there, sitting at the very, very bottom of this weird pocket that I never even really open on my backpack, there you were, sleeping soundly as if nothing were wrong, as if you were never lost. You were with me the whole time. You never left me. You were in my backpack at home, safe and sound with me all night and I didn't even know it. So thank God that I found you guys before I went and asked any uncomfortable, awkward questions because like I said, that would never happen here. And this goes to show I was right. It never happened. Whew, so I found you. I found you. Thanks for hanging on. I feel better now we can start our day. Oh, mosquitoes. The one mosquito I've found this year. This year hasn't had that many mosquitoes. But of course, the one out here is going to find me. So yes, my heart was pounding a little bit this morning. Because I know that if I would have left you in the truck and I would have lost you, it would have been because I was irresponsible and didn't take proper care of you. And I never want to be that guy. Okay, you guys are important to me. Even though I thought I had left you in the truck, my subconscious had already put you safely in my bag. And you were at home in my office, right beside me. 
and I, I didn't even realize it, but I did keep you safe, so thank goodness. These cameras are expensive. I'm, I'm filming on a GoPro Hero 8. It's not the newest one. I just got it though, like a month or so ago, and it cost me like 450 bucks. And you're attached to a, you're attached to a head strap right now, which is way overpriced because it's a GoPro product. So it's like another 50 bucks. So it was like a $500 deal that I was trying to trying to sort out here. 500 bucks. And and contrary to like I said the other day, contrary to what Google says I'm worth. <laughs> 500 bucks is not something I have right now. <laughs> okay. All right. But good thing I still got you. Okay. So Let's get trucking. I'm just going to park my truck in our parking spot back there. See, you're on a head strap right now. You can probably see it in the mirror there, right? And just that head strap, can you see it around my head? It's like my hands-free filming device. Just that head strap, because it has the name GoPro on it, 50 bucks at least. It might be more than that already. Anything with GoPro name on it is, is right away is very expensive, but they do make superior products. I've tried to buy and use a GoPro knockoff camera before. Don't even bother wasting your money. That is a waste of money. Just go with the real deal. It's expensive, I know, but uh, just go with the real deal. I'll back myself right up against here. Not up against here, but you know what I mean. Against the fence. There we go, that's my parking spot. Yeah, it's, uh, it's worth it just to go with the real deal. Anyways, let's uh, grab our coffees. Chevrolet GMC. Look at this. The Chevrolet one's been used a little more, a little more beat up. She's still good to go. Chevy like a rock. They gave up that slogan, didn't they? They don't call it like a rock anymore. How are we doing here? We're not too close to the fence, are we? Nah, we're good to go. <sighs> Oops, in all the chaos, I left my driver door open on Sammy. Oh well. Well. I got a new mud flap. I didn't lose you. And I got stuff to do today. It's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a real good day. Oh, that and then I gotta go throw my garbage out today. Put that back there. All right. Let's do it. There's our trailer. So on top of feeling like I lost you guys this morning, I also had a nail in one of my drive tires. So I had to wait here for our tire guy to come and fix it up for me. He just put on a, a different tire. So now we should be good to go. Oh, and I found a new pair of gloves. So that's fun. So yes, we're going to go pick up some poles and... Uh, I'm gonna bring them on down to a town called St. Pierre, a little bit south of here. Now I have the truck turned off mostly so you can hear me, but also so that we can hear for air leaks. And I'm gonna spike the trailer here to check the trailer brakes. Now, I heard one of you in my comment section, or saw one of you in my comment sections tell me that uh, your trailer brake stays down. It sounded like you were from uh, the UK as well. Our trailer brakes here anyway, all of the ones I've ever had, all the trucks I've ever driven, they're spring loaded. So if you don't tie them down like this, they'll just spring right back up. So you gotta hold it down like that. So we're gonna go and check all the lights real quick. Come around, roll up the landing gear. I don't like to do that last because I don't want to forget doing that. Check, make sure these tires are good. Filled with uh, high quality compressed air. This light's on, that light's off, that's good. All right, now in the back here we got our signals working and we got our brake lights working. 
and also these marker lights that are back here for some reason. Oops. Whoopsie. Whoops. What did I do? Why did I push that in? How do I get back to it? Ah, oh no. Oh, it'll stay there. Okay. <laughs> we'll just leave that there like that. It's fine. Good to go. These things are chained down tight. Binders are locked. Signal under here, working. Remember, we're gonna do the landing gear yet. Brake lights. Uh, it was tire on the other side of my truck that had a nail in it. The uh, night staff that uh, fixed my mud flap, they also noticed that there was a nail in one of my tires. So they left a little tag for me, a little note. It was this tire here. This tire is a little bit newer than the rest of them. The other one had a nail stuck through it. It wasn't hissing air, it wasn't leaking like crazy, but uh, still don't want to run down the road with a nail in your tire <laughs> if you don't have to. Okay, so I'm gonna roll up this landing gear and get moving. See that? That's what I was talking about. Trailer brake, automatically fires back up and releases. I don't know how it is where you're at. I'd like to know down below in the comment section if it's different on the trucks where you're at. Uh, if it is, let me know where you're at and what kind of truck it is. All of these campaign signs all over the place. We have a federal election in Canada uh, coming up real soon. Which is funny, because I heard on the internet that our elections were cancelled until the pandemic was deemed over. I guess that was fake news. <laughs> we got an election coming up. And it's sort of a referendum, I guess, on how the government has been uh, dealing with the pandemic and everything related to it. So, don't forget if you're a Canadian to get out there and vote for your preferred candidate in your riding. It is important. We all have a voice and we all get a say in if we think the government's been doing a good job or not. So I'm on my way to pick up these polls. But our election will be on September 20th, which is coming up really quick. So I do encourage all of you, uh, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, that is your decision. I'm just going to encourage you the best I can, get out there and vote. Uh, just take the time, it's important. If you're over 18, 18 or older, just put your two cents in and uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Do you like the way things are going or do you think it could be done a little differently and better? That's what this is all about. It's going to be a good day though. It's going to be a really good day. We got a new tire on us. We found you guys. I thought I lost you. The sun is shining. We're trucking. The only thing that could be better about today is if Weasel was with us. I didn't take him again today, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Maybe tomorrow. I wasn't too sure what my day was going to look like today. But I probably could have taken him along anyway. Probably should have.
normally with a, a pole load like this, I'd have the picker truck with the claw. But unfortunately, that truck is in the shop right now, getting a valve fixed or something. I don't know. So we have one other picker truck like that. And another driver drives it. His name's Anthony. So he's in that truck today. He already picked up one load of poles. And he's out delivering them in Mitchell, Manitoba. These poles are going to St. Pierre, like I told you. And we're going to meet up there. I'm going to bring the poles there. And he's going to unload them with his claw truck. It's a little different than the one that, uh, that I drive. I was trained on 3106. I forget what unit number his is. But his operates completely differently. So I haven't been trained on that one. So he's going to unload the poles today. Too bad. Would have been fun to use the claw again. But things break. Who knows what happened to it, but it's getting fixed. So for now, we're down a picker truck. So all I can do is bring these poles there. I can't unload them myself. I mean, I am strong, but I don't want to strain myself too much. You know, I don't want to show off too much. So we'll use the claw truck and unload the poles. We have uh, two trucks like that, if you haven't gathered that yet. Two trucks, 3106, and then there's Anthony's truck, uh, which is, it's a white Kenworth. It's actually a really nice truck. It has a 20,000 pound front axle as well. It's a tough looking, mean looking truck. It's nice. We'll get her done. See, you roll up the extra strap here. Look at this. You roll up the extra strap like I just did. And you go behind here. And you pinch it in in there so that when you tighten this up, that's pinned in there. And then all that extra slap, uh, extra strap isn't flapping around that'd be no good you don't want to cut all the straps all the time and there's a lot some guys they just cut the straps so that's short enough right these are expensive straps and once you cut the strap for this length it's no good for any other length so i never cut the straps i just leave them at their uh, i believe they're a 35 foot length so it's 25 i think it's 35 that's what we usually get I'll leave them at that length and I just wrap them up like that because next time, like tomorrow, I'm probably going to have a load that's going to need a longer strap. That way I still have it. But if I cut it, the strap's pretty much useless for anything else. And it's an expensive, expensive thing. You don't want to waste it. Off on the road we go with our sticks. Our very, very nice sticks. Someone's going to put them in the ground and use them for something.
with your header still on the combine. Unreal. They're supposed to put the header on a trailer and then pull the trailer behind the combine so that they don't take up the whole road like that, but sometimes they get a little lazy. Another wasp bites the dust. Oh, the war is still raging between me and the wasps here. So far, there are more casualties on their side than my side. I'm still good to go. They only stung me once. And I'm still standing. Oh, that's right, I gotta turn the lights on. Brake lights are working. You guys hear any air leaks? bad question to ask right now because my suspension is adjusting here. That's not an air leak. You'll have to trust me. One sec, let's get the lights going here. Dun, dun. Release the trailer brakes. Okay. Now we have all the lights on. As you can tell, I'm hooked up to a big box. Van trailer. We're taking this into Winnipeg. Lights are working. We gotta pick something up. Now what's that hissing noise back here? Hey. Suspension's just adjusting. Okay. We'll make double sure of that before we leave. Okay, so I, I took the brake lights off. I like these taillights because they have the, the ring around here like that. Yeah, I like that. Makes me feel fancy. It's pretty cool. All right, yeah, those are working up there too. You see, I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but the signals also flash up there, which is really nice because then people can see your signals over traffic. Just make sure it should be empty. Hello! It's empty. Yep. I've got two pickups in Winnipeg. Check these tires. Oh, those feel good. Oh, those feel good too. Nice tires. Very nice. Lights well, working. These things are all strapped in and tight. Okay. Check my tires here. No more nails that I've picked up. That's good. All the rust is in place as it should be. That's good. My new tire here is doing very well. <laughs> no more nails so far. All right. Part two of the day. I got passed off to van division. I'm just getting passed around these days. Look at that, the street lights are turning purple here too. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people out there trying to convince people that it's some kind of government conspiracy thing. <laughs> that they're like black lights that can tell if you're vaccinated or not or something like that. What actually happened is that there's a manufacturer 
in uh, the US, in Ohio or something, that uh, <laughs> created a whole bunch of them, like thousands and thousands of these LED lights that are sold all across North America. And uh, a whole ton of them have a defect. And after they get a little bit older, they, they start to emit purple lights. There's a whole explanation behind it. And these purple LED street lights are showing up all across Canada and the United States. And you got a whole bunch of people out there thinking that it's some kind of crazy government detection system. Nope, just a factory recall. Have you seen any of these purple street lights where you're from? Tell me if you have and tell me where you're from. So tomorrow I'm taking the RGN trailer. It's a removable gooseneck. I've got to take it up to Pointe de Bois, about two hours from here, sort of northeast, uh, out in the lakes. I've got to go out there and pick up some freight with it, that low bed trailer. But to do that, I've got to make sure I have all the right equipment with me. So I've been filling up my headache rack, making sure that I have the proper chains and binders. I need two more chains on here yet. Those we get from this lovely rack. Whole bunch of chains. I'm gonna grab two more of these. Put them on there. They're pretty heavy. Some are shorter, some are longer. Got one shorter one there and one longer one and a variety up there as well. It depends on what kind of freight I'm pulling. This is an oversized hook. It's too big for my headache rack hanger. I'll show you the difference. Find a regular one. You can see the difference there? Oversized, regular. This doesn't fit in there, this will. There we go. I've been meaning to fill up that headache rack again for a while. Remember when I loaded up that gravel trailer on the step deck? The snow was still on the ground, wasn't it? Maybe it was spring already. I think it was like April or something like that. I think the vlog was called Trailer on a Trailer or something. Anyway, I left those chains that I had on that load and the highway driver took it out, right? I never got the chains back. And I know you watched the videos, bud. <laughs> That's okay, you probably did bring them back and they probably just made it onto this chain rack over here and uh, nobody told me, so I'll let you off the hook. <laughs> That's why we usually take our equipment off the trailers and then each driver uses their own equipment because you don't see it again otherwise. Even if they honestly did try to bring it back, sometimes it just doesn't make it back to me. So now I got it all filled up again. And uh, we're ready for the races. Up to Pointe de Bois tomorrow with the low bed, RGN. First time actually pulling it out of here. I got trained on it a while ago, right? And the same day I got trained on the, the hook, the claw truck. It's my first day pulling that out. Let's hope I don't mess it up. You're gonna have to tune into tomorrow's video to find out. There it is. I'm gonna hook up to it today. That's one less thing to do in the morning. Alright, so first thing tomorrow morning we're going to get here, 
I'll just finish hooking up yet, but I'm gonna be pulling this thing. So don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did like it, and we'll see you tomorrow on this, eh? That should be fun.